This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Jermaine Clement, who is Hi. the, I guess you would say, the star of People, Places, and Things, or as my girlfriend was calling it earlier, nouns, um, <laughs> which is a, I guess you'd call it a dramedy about a man sort of coming to terms with the disillusion of his relationship and sort of having to adapt to adulthood. On it's it. not a dramedy, it's a coma. It's a coma? A comedy Okay, drama. I like coma. We should go with that. Yeah. Um, so, one of the things that really struck me with this film is that you have been in Hollywood and have been performing in some capacity for a while now. You've established a career. You sort of have done the single leading man thing, and now you're sort of reaching a point both in your life and <laughs> cinematically where it's like the, da- yeah, the dad character sort of becoming oh, right. a, a, a realistic um, <laughs> issue, or not an issue, a character that you're offered. Um, yeah. What is it like sort of coming to that point in your career and is it something as a father yourself that you have reevaluated the parts that you take you know do you take roles that your kid might be able to see soon or do you think about your your life in terms of being a father and wanting to portray that on camera how has that all affected you in terms of that in your career Uh, i'm not sure if i thought of it um you know as um, a marker in my career but Perhaps I responded to the script more strongly, being a father, because a lot of this is um, dealing with fatherhood and um, simply missing your children. And I, and I think it probably affected me more emotionally reading it than it would have before. What is it like, sort of... Um, and I remember the first time I was off a, you know, like audition <laughs> to be a dad, and that was, you know... I was only in my early 20s, and Do you, uh, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I, well, Hollywood is such a weird thing. Like, um, I don't know if you follow like Amy Schumer. Yeah. She re- recently did an episode where there was a segment about like a woman's last fuckable day in Hollywood yeah. and going off or whatever. And I imagine there are definitely milestones sort of like that in your career. I mean, be- when the first time you're offered like the parent roles, when the first right. time you're offered a grandparent role, uh, like, is have you really thought about your career in sort of terms of like planning, uh, like, I got to do this move, so I'm going to do an animated movie so they don't always think of me as, like, this no. mus- musical comedian, or, right. like, or have you just taken the roles that you've been offered and sort of played the dice that way? No, I, uh, but I, um, I guess I've often been attracted to um, roles that are imaginative, you know, mm. like, films that are imaginative rather than real life, and this is the first time that I've, it's probably the f- first time in a while that I've been offered that kind of thing for a start. And when I was younger, I just wasn't interested. You know, I didn't want to be a normal guy being in a normal <laughs> world. You know, it doesn't seem like, well, that, know, that raises a I'm question. already a normal guy in a normal world. <laughs> but now, I guess being uh, more mature, um, <laughs> perhaps, <laughs> uh, now I can see something interesting in that. Was it, when, what was it exactly that attracted you to this role? I mean, obviously, I, you've shown a uh, interest in independent film over the years. Like, it's something that you've done uh, when you could have easily gone and done, like, another Men in Black or whatever, you know. You could, you could have continued those big-budget films, potentially, but you've done, like, what we do in Shadows, this. I mean, is the... What about this project where you're like, okay, you know, I'm actually going to be a normal guy for once. I'm willing to do it yeah. for this project. What was it that made this one the one you were willing to see? I think I used to worry that um, I might be boring or that, that it would be boring. <laughs> Just like uh, but, but, um, a story about real life. And even though I don't feel like that when choosing a movie necessarily, um, you know, I, I still... I, I still like movies that are, are, are set in reality, but um, you know, I, I, um, I don't know. I just, I just, it's more. I just stopped worrying about that. Whether it was, but that's probably one of those things that you know, as an actor, like the longer you've worked, like you probably understand yourself in the industry better. Like I think when you're younger, there's probably a lot more concern about like and I, this is at least my experience in doing with very young actors that there's a lot more concern about being typecast about being no but lead. also I never I didn't really want to be an actor and I started off doing other stuff writing and um and then 
the way I started working in America was doing music, you know, comedy yeah. music. Yeah. Uh, um, but, um, and, I, and, I, and I used to get scripts, you know, either getting me to audition or, or to consider a, a lead role, and I wouldn't even consider a lead role. Because wow. it would be like, oh, no, that's an actor. You want an actor to do that. And so this this time I, you know, I thought, why not? You know, it's something, I don't know what it is, but something's happened where I don't care. I don't care anymore if, I, if, I'm, a, if I'm an actor. That's great. <laughs> um, in terms of this being a coma, there's definitely a lot of interesting dramatic elements to your character and the story that he's had to sort of live through. Like, the, there's very, it's very funny still, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of co in the ma, uh, as long as in the condition of the ma. But... Um, I really liked seeing you in a sort of more dramatic fashion. Is that something that you're thinking about doing more going forward, or or is this just uh, a change of pace? Or what is your sort of feelings towards dramatic films? Because you clearly have the ability to do it, um, but it generally has not been something you've really yeah tried you, to do. Yeah, it, it hasn't been something I was interested in before. Um, uh, no, I don't think I'm. You know, I'm not. I, I still think of this as a comedy, even it's though very funny. Yeah, there's, it's very lo- there's funny. lots of sad parts, but um, I didn't really think of it as that different. And um, I remember that someone came up to Jim the first day we were shooting and and asked him, "Is this a comedy or a drama?" And he said, "I don't know." And um, I was very happy with that answer. You know, going, "Yeah, why should it?" You're you're absolutely right. I mean, the de- like to define films by genre is in some ways a ridiculous thing because I mean I mean it's like a ma- it's a marketing totally. thing and also people it sets people up in the audience of what well, what gosh am I going to enjoy this or I'm going to feel sad <laughs> but know? it's, it's some, something's sometimes better about that like I saw this movie cold like I didn't know what like I knew you yeah, were well, in that, it that's and always I, the best way to see a movie but um, to get it's so hard to, to get that. to the theatre yeah. without knowing anything about yeah. the film yeah. Um, in terms of your interest in fantastical characters, is that something that you're still uh, focused on? You still like the non-normal characters? Uh, yeah, it appeals to me. So, yeah. like, where, where, where does that go for you? Like, do you want to do things like an action movie, or do you want to do things like a sci-fi movie, or do you, like, where, what do you, like, sort of view as, like, a non-normal character. I mean, because right. I guess... Well, I'm playing, at the moment, I'm uh, acting in the BFG. Uh, oh, the okay, the Roald Dahl so, yes, thing. That's I'm awesome. I'm one of the giants. <laughs> and that seems like, for some reason, I just feel, I just feel uh, totally comfortable and it's really fun, really fun to play with. How, how much of your picking these roles um, is affected by your view of whether it'll be fun or something. Do you look to challenge yourself, or is it just like, I just want to do something that I'll have fun with for, the, you know, on three Well, people, places, things, it's the only time I've ever thought I'll do this to challenge myself. I don't think of, mm. you know, there's, and there's a certain degree to which I can't take acting seriously <laughs> because I'm always aware that it's pretending. Uh, and people, places, things, probably less so because it's real life, and a lot of it is based on uh, Jim's life, not all of it, but you know certain elements, and um, so I did take it s- seriously because it's a real person's, real story and and real feelings that a lot of people go through, um, and it's one of the only times that I've you know not had this. Oh, this is a game, or you know. What, did you do anything different to prepare for it? Did you feel any additional pressure to? I thought I, I thought I would um, feel pressure, but. Uh, you know, it's about this graphic novelist, and I. It's always been a f- bit of a fantasy of mine to become a graphic novelist. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I could do it. But uh, yeah, it's one of those things that I've always thought I would do, and this seemed like well, I could, at least I could act as one, and um, you know, I'd start sending Jim drawings, and he said, "I'd love to use some of your drawings in the film." And then he gave me these projects to do. Um, so I had to, the kids have these kites. I had to draw oh, those. you actually made the kites? And it, yeah, I just drew on them. <laughs> and, the, and then there's this um, graffiti um, posters. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, so I did, I did those. And those became 
much they would they would make me much more anxious than the actual acting because <laughs> I like I always think you know I can draw a little bit but this time people are going to see it you know and I, um, I've never like, published anything <laughs> or you know I've never had anything that people see so so I had this new pressure and it and all of my attention and uh, concern about the film wasn't about acting, it was about drawing. Wow. Well, the funny thing is you talk about potentially having interest in being a graphic novelist as part of this. Uh, have you ever thought about teaching? Because I actually thought you are really good in the performance as the right. teacher. Right. I don't <laughs> think I could actually teach. No, like, you, should, you should actually even just make a, a video series about, like, comic dissection as a right. class and just like release that because that was actually a very engaging and interesting part discussing like what occurs between the frames. Yeah, and no, no, that would that would terrify me and any time that I've been brought into a class to talk to them about, uh, you know, say usually writing but um, I've been terrified <laughs> and so they've sometimes ripped me to pieces and I don't it's a, it's a um, you know, it's an interesting thing i don't know what to think of teaching i don't know you know is it a performance i think is it, it is, a is performance. it a, like yeah, yeah in some ways it sometimes it seems like that but um it's a lot of performance <laughs> you know uh, i i you yeah, know i couldn't do that but jim strauss is a teacher who the director of the film he teaches at the same the very same institution but he <laughs> teaches in film very nice. Uh, in terms of uh, your character, you have two daughters in the film. What was it like acting with those two actresses? Because it's very, very sweet and tender to sort of see you um, engaging with them during during your performance. But also, was that influenced by how you've perceived being a parent or anything like that? Or what was that experience like? Because I think, as far as I can recall, this is the first time you played a parent in anything. Yeah, I mean... It's the first time I've played an involved parent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, and and a film called Eagle vs. Shark oh, character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you think of him as a single guy, but he actually does. That's have, true. He that's, has a, that's a good point. Yeah, a daughter that he doesn't really look after. <laughs> um, yeah, I I mean my my son is the same age as Andrea. Oh, really? Okay. And Gia, that. Um, the girls in it so I'm used to relating on that <laughs> level and um, and we would hang out and see it I got I probably got pretty fit because I would make me lift them up all the time <laughs> like I am in the in the publicity pictures because it just every time we went filming that's what I'd have to do lift them up <laughs> I'd have to lift them up and uh, you know and we'd draw a lot and we became quite good friends They at first I was worried they would um, they started it's their first film They've since done another film um, for David O. Russell. <laughs> but um, in, the, in that one, they're, they're playing the same character. They're playing oh, okay, the yeah. twins. Um, but um, they started calling me Dad, and I, and I was, they really concerned me. <laughs> and I was thinking, do they know the, the line, you know? And after weeks... I learned that, you know, I realized they did. They're, it's just their joke. They're just that good. You know, they're just joking yeah. as they're carrying it on. And um, uh, But we got on really well. And um, and they they really they really were upset when the film finished, like they, they were, they were going to miss it. Do you end up developing some sort of, like, paternal, not saying, like, you're like, I'm your new dad, like, get your favorite right. out of this, but, like, there is an element of, like, by the end or as the process goes on that you feel protective about them to try and, yes. like, make the environment as conducive for them as, just, I mean, naturally. I, I think they're great, and I just worry that, uh, that they're going to get snipped up for, by a TV show. I mean, <laughs> yeah. they're already in a David O. Russell film for the next movie. Clearly, they're just yeah, flying yeah. up the charts. Films, are, films are not so stressful, but TV is a more stressful, more stressful world. Yeah, um, I think a David O. Russell film is probably okay. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. He's a pretty serious dude. Like, right, I, I, don't I, I don't know. Like, that's an interesting question. Um, in terms of like your, I, I, I heard that they enjoyed that. I keep in contact with their mother. And oh, just fantastic! Check out how it's going and, and so. In terms of uh, your career, is there what would you like to do now? I mean, I was just sort of saying, you know, you like grand characters like action films. And stuff no, like I just that. go project to project. The next thing I want to do is um, 
Did you see what we do in the shadows? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very, yeah. okay. So uh, well, we want to write the sequel to that oh, about um, Reese Darby's character. Uh, the werewolf? Yeah. Yeah, so that's great. Called We Werewolves. That's yeah. fantastic. Is it, is, it, is it a relief or is it, I don't know, challenging in terms of the Hollywood picture? People like you think Marvel's planning like 10 years out with their movies and stuff like yeah. that. Is it easier that you don't stress past your next project or is it at all concerning that you're like, you don't know what you're doing next? Or No, because I think I, I think I was the most satisfied when I was doing local theatre in Wellington, oh. uh, like 10 minutes away from my house. And I know I could always do that. So like, uh, if if, Worst case if I don't get a job, then I'll like, I'll do the I'll go back to the most fun job I've ever had, you know. Very nice. Um, so and I could always be a uh, aspiring graphic novelist. Yeah, I, like honestly, I I definitely think you could do it. I mean, <laughs> the um the pictures the the main pictures the graphic novel pictures are done by an artist um, called Gray Williams, mm. who's really uh, who's fantastic very talented and um i i tried to learn his style <laughs> and so i could draw on screen but he's too tidy and i can never be that tidy <laughs> very nice uh in terms of um this film uh is there a place people can find out more information about it? is there a release date or anything that people should be aware of i think it's being released in august okay very cool. States. And a website, a Facebook page, something like that. They can Google it. We're skis- yeah, you know, I like, with what we do in the shadows, I'm involved in everything. I know all that stuff. But this, I'm an actor. You're just so on cruise control. You're like, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I guess someone will tell me. I guess you can look up people, places, things. Very cool. Um, yeah. And in terms of, as you said, the next there project. Is a, there is a Twitter oh, okay. um, they can look account. Okay. I don't know if it's tweeted anything. <laughs> but you, you're, you're not PI on the Twitter either. No, I'm not. So just I'm like, not. Something, there's something out I'm there. No, I'm not. Uh, and the next project for you, you said, is the werewolf one? That's what I'd like to do next. Okay. I've, got, I've got other things that I'm doing, like a little bit of acting. And um, Taika and Waititi and I have um, written some episodes of a, of a, um, a TV show that we, you know, they're kind of like specials, like anthology. Okay. Specials for HBO that we're hmm. um, planning to film next year. So you don't know which one's going to occur first. You're just sort of playing it by ear and seeing which one happens. Ah, uh, well, I've just got to do some of this acting bullshit. <laughs> I've got, um, I've got, you know, doing some other acting stuff first. Is the best place? Do you have a Twitter or anything that people should follow to keep up to date? They, they can if they like. That actually, you would update and know what's going I on. I update it a lot, you know, especially when I'm like coming to a place like this, going at the, at the airport. So, <laughs> and you know, when you, Twitter is such a um, diversion for writing. So if I'm, if I'm doing lots of tweeting, that means I should be writing because that's <laughs> why I'm sitting at my computer and just clicking over the other page. I would actually imagine it's a little difficult as a comedian because you want to make sure, you know, what you put out there is entertaining to people or whatever. Don't even I, I don't that. think, I don't think a lot of people don't really seem to worry about that. You're right, you're right. People just chug it out. There's a lot of content going on. People there. talk about all sorts of things. Like <laughs> people who you think are brilliant in their professional work on Twitter, they're talking about the oh, pants yeah. not fitting. Twitter is both an amazing tool and actually shocking. You're like mundane yeah. at the same yeah, time. Yeah, you're absolutely right. some, yeah. Is your Twitter just Jermaine Clement? It's or? Uh, Jermaine Clement. Okay, perfect. But I don't want to. Presume I'm not only Jermaine Clement. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, like, I mean, I'll I, snatch that actually, up now if that's not already. It's actually, I should say Jermaine Clement. That's how I pronounce my name. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I switched to you, to your pronunciation. I, I'm I'm glad you uh, corrected me actually because I have a, a last name that people mispronounce. All oh, the time. what's that? Fornishari. Fornishari. Yeah, people wouldn't even try and pronounce Sounds it in difficult. school. So I, I definitely, yeah. if yeah, if it's wrong, definitely correct me. <laughs> okay. right. okay. um, well, I wish you good luck with this going forward, and I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you. Thank you so much. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.